Our first step in text mining is to collect the text. And in a later video, we will look at web scraping. How do you pull text from a website? Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to scrape text from a PDF. Now, if you're going to work along with us, you will find this workbook at drstephpowers.github.io slash BIA. And we are working here in chapter seven, where we are looking at data sources. And our workbook right here is in text mining. So once you go in here to this workbook, you will find the Python code we are working through. What you can do as soon as it loads, it's a little on the slow side, open in Google Collab, save a copy to your Google Drive, uh, and that way you can run the code and edit the code. And what we're also going to be doing is we are going to be scraping these PDFs. So you will need to grab these PDFs that we see here. And these are documents uh, that are about artificial intelligence. And what they are is they are guidances from different government organizations, one from Canada, one from the European Union, one from the US. So make sure you download those and put them into your Google Doc, your Google Drive. And that way we can scrape them. So we'll start first by installing a package called Textract. And so this is going to allow us to uh, pull the text from a PDF. There are other types of ones that will scrape um, PDFs and documents. Amazon has one, and there are a couple different ones. So we're just gonna use this one, but you can explore other ones. When you are installing Textract, you need to run it twice. And uh, so once this is done, we will hit the button again, just to make sure we have all of the components. Um, because some of them depend on the installation of a previous component. So we run it twice just to make sure we have everything. Okay. Running a little slow today. <laughs> All right. Any second now. All right. So it has run. It's telling us that it needs to re restart sessions. You just hit restart. It doesn't really change anything. It's just restarting. If you already had imported uh, data sets and things like that, you'd have to re-import them because the session has just rebooted itself, essentially. We do a second run. This one should be faster because it should say all of our uh, requirements are already satisfied. It's just going to double check and make sure if there's dependencies that it has the update. So we'll just wait for that run. All right. So now that we have got that going, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect our uh, Python code workbook here to your own Google Drive. So I'm just going to run from Google Collab. I'm connecting to my own Google Drive and I will link here. When you do this, it's your workbook collecting, connecting to your Google Drive. It doesn't give permission for anyone else to access anything else. You'll notice that when you run it, you're not getting access to mine. Uh, so it does connects your copy of your workbook in your Google Drive to the rest of your Google Drive so that we can pull in some text. So now that we've installed Textract, we're going to import it. And then we're going to pull in our documents. So we have these documents here that you saved a copy into your Google Drive. You got them off of GitHub. And for me, I have put them inside my drive in a folder called BIBA Handbook and inside a folder inside that called Chapter 7. And that's where you find this PDF. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a name. We're going to use Textract.process. Tell it its location. The first part through my drive slash is going to be the same for you. And then whatever folder you've put it in. And then we have the name of the file. We're going to do this for the EU document, the US document, and the Canadian document. And we're going to decode it. So we're going to specify that its formatting is UTF-8. So just going to quick pull that in and then pull in the next one and pull in the next one. What we want to do is we want to compare these documents. What words are used in these documents? 
uh, create a visualization of this information with a word cloud. Now, notice when you bring this in. So if I say, show me AI can, this is the Canadian document. It's the guide on the use of generative AI in Canada. Notice that it contains a email or um, a URL, right? So a URL for the Canadian government. Notice you see lots of slash ends. So anytime you have a return, you know, where you move to the next line in your text, or if you have extra spaces, what it's doing when it scrapes this is it converts that into code. So you see the slash N and the slash UE080. These are all formatting. When you pull from a PDF and it finds extra spaces or it returns to the next line, it's replacing that with this code here. So if we want this to be usable to analyze, we're going to have to remove all that stuff because we just want the words. We want the word government. We don't want slash N in front of it. Okay. We don't want, we want the word benefits. We don't want slash X A O benefits. We want to remove those pieces. So we're going to create what is called a pre-processing pipeline. Now, just a refresher on pipelines. We've talked a little bit about pipelines before and just a bigger picture of a pipeline. When you are doing uh, your analysis, you probably have multiple pipelines. So you probably have a data pipeline, a pipeline that might help you extract from your original source, transform it into the way it needs to be laid out um, so that it's ready for analysis and then loading it in uh, to whatever you're going to use to analysis. So we're going to work on part of this data pipeline here. In later videos, we will talk about model pipelines. So when we start to do our uh, classification, then what we're going to do is we're going to separate the data into testing and training data. We're going to specify which classification model we're going to use. We're going to fit the model. We're going to then use to predict it uh, and then we'll assess its accuracy. So there we are automating the process of actually doing the classification. So we'll have a model pipeline for that. And then you may also have a pipeline, a service pipeline or deployment pipeline, where if you are continually collecting data and running the analysis, then you want it to tune. So we'll look at hyperparameters and how to tune your models. And then you want it to redeploy and monitor the performance. So for example, if you are creating a process to create a recommendation engine, so you're Netflix and you want, when people log into Netflix, you want it to say, here's what videos you should watch. We will need a data pipeline to extract the information about what movies people are watching and the ratings they are giving it. We load that into our, our uh, model here our classification model likely because we're looking at their ratings, positive, negative, and, uh, and then we're building the model, we're fitting the model, we're using it to predict what other things people will like, uh, and then we deploy it so that it shows up in Netflix. When, other, when you go in, it makes those recommendations for you. So there's many different pipelines. And some of them are built-in pipelines. The one we'll look at for classification models has, um, we'll just call a package called pipeline uh, that will help us build the model pipeline. Uh, but otherwise, we build the pipeline. And so in this case, we're going to build a pre-processing pipeline uh, by creating a function. So we're going to import re, that's the package we're going to use here. And we're going to create a function called clean underscore text. What it's going to do is it's going to take our text, whatever document we give it, and it is going to substitute in the text. Anytime it finds that slash X A zero, it's going to replace it with just an empty space. So that's what this second piece here is. This quotes around nothing is to make it an empty space. And it's applying this to the text. And then it's going to call that text. So we're basically going to pull out the slash X A zero everywhere in the text. Then what we're going to do is we're going to remove anywhere there is a slash n dot and replace it with nothing. Then we're going to do the slash n, replace it with nothing, slash ue080, replace it with nothing, slash x0c, replace it with nothing. You kind of get the point, right? 
So we're going to remove all of those weird symbols it's put in where it's extracted from a PDF uh, and it's then put in code to represent kind of those spaces and returns and all those things. We also are going to remove punctuation. So that's what we have here. Our next symbols are removing some of the punctuation and we're compiling a list. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. Sorry, what we're doing is we're compiling a list here of things that show up in, uh, in HTML. And so we're going to remove our HTML symbols. And sorry, then we're gonna compile things that appear in URLs. And then we're gonna remove all of those. And then last here, we're looking at um, for email. So sorry, we haven't removed I don't think we've removed punctuation yet. We'll remove punctuation later because if we're going to tokenize by sentence, we can leave those. All right. So here we're just removing the HTML symbols. We're removing the URL symbols, and then we're removing things that appear in emails. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do all of these things. So let's create our function. And then what we can do is we can apply that function to clean the Canada document, the US document, and so on. My goodness, my internet is moving slow today. <laughs> Lots of spinny wheels. So once we have loaded in our function here, then let it, let's apply it. Uh, to the Canada document. So recall the Canada document before looked like this. And now with our pre-processing pipeline, let's run this. And then let's look at it now. So we can see now all of those weird symbols are removed. If when you run this, you're still getting weird symbols and all you have to do is add a line here, do text equals re dot sub, and then put in quotes, whatever that weird symbol is that's appearing, comma, and then quotes around emptiness and then text and you can set up your function to remove that as well. So we can see most of the weird symbols are gone we would then run this for the US and for the EU. Oh, I guess I already added that there. So in our next video, we're going to then tokenize now that we have cleaned our text.